Namaskar. Yeah. I'm Dr. Subhamakshmi, a pediatric and preventive dentist, member IDA Tiruvalli. Indian Dental Association is conducting an aware, cardiac congenital heart diseases awareness week. And it is in conjunction with this that IDA Tiruvalli branch brings to you this awareness video about dentistry for children with cardiac conditions. Let us understand that the vast majority of cardiovascular disorders that you see in children basically could be congenital or acquired. And 80% of these are congenital. Congenital cardiac disorders may be very broadly classified into three types, or rather, I would say as two types. One is when there is going to be a shunt and the other which are obstructive lesions. The acyanotic uh, shunt diseases include your ventricular septal defect, atrial septal defects, and patent ductus arterial. And in most of these patients, it is an acyanotic condition, which means you may not really see a lot of uh, differences when you see the patient, but the parent will clearly give you a history. The cyanotic chance which you might see in patients is tetralogy of phallic and transposition of the greater arteries. Both these conditions are not very commonly seen, but we do get to see patients with these. The acquired conditions in children, one of the important or uh, the most commonly uh, seen acquired condition is rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease following rheumatic fever. And infective previous history of infective endocarditis in patients who have had a prosthetic valve or any of those. So when you're looking at a patient with, cardiac, uh, with a cardiovascular disorder, the things that you might have to keep in your mind is to look for cyanosis, signs of cyanosis, that is the bluish tinge on the lips, the cheeks, or the mucosa, uh, dyspnea when they're sitting on the chair or on mild exertion, and they have a very low stress tolerance and are easily fatigued. These are the things that we should have in the background in our mind when we're with these children. What are the important oral manifestations that you could see in children with cardiovascular disorders? One, there, there can be developmental defects of the enamel, particularly in the primary dentition. There is an increased risk of dental caries. Let's not forget the medication that they're going to be taking on a daily basis and being children usually end up being sweetened uh, syrups. Also, we can look for delayed tooth eruption and an increased prevalence of periodontal disease and very rarely some cyanotic gingivitis too. So what are the medical implications of these oral diseases? As we all know, the one real big thing that we're worried about is bacterial endocarditis. And there is also a chance that they have bacterial resistance and a tendency for bleeding heavily post-procedure, especially if they are on anticoagulant therapy, which is not as common as it is in adults with children. Patient with a cardiac condition and whom you want to treat, what are the steps that you could do? First one, take enough time, spend enough time talking to the parents to review the medical history. One good thing about congenital heart diseases is that parents are aware of it from when the child is born. So they have been following it up for quite a few time and hence they can give you a very, very direct and detailed history of all medications that the child's been on, whatever procedures that the child has undergone and all those details. Also make a note of the review, uh, the physician whom they are seeing and their regularity of their follow-ups and any other instructions that the physician has given. If need be, in certain conditions, you might have to obtain a medical consultation or the physician's consent before you uh, proceed for treatment. Here, let me also put in a word of caution. It is not necessary that every time we defer a treatment asking for a physician's or the treating consent.
consultant's medical opinion or reference. In cases when we are in doubt, please do send in for a opinion and ask for a written consent. Some of the ABCDs which we should keep in mind when, uh, you know, which could be potential issues or risks when we are treating children with cardiac issues is prophylactic antibiotics, antibiotics, analgesics, anesthesia. In anesthesia, you know, restrict the use of vasoconstrictors and what type of anesthesia you give for these children, preferably local anesthesia may not be an issue, but you will have to take extra care not to make an injection into the vessels. And anxiety, these patients usually have a very low stress tolerance. So be ready to, you know, take on the anxiety and maybe with an anxiolytic or a mild sedative with the physician's consent. And when we're looking at certain therapies which are recommended for children who have uh, cardiac disorders, always try to do the most definitive treatment. If there is a primary tooth which has a poor prognosis, better not to do a pulp therapy, but to do an extraction. And whenever uh, the permanent dentition is concerned, uh, you know, the selection again is of utmost importance. So, and if, if at any point you feel not comfortable in treating a patient who's having multiple cardiac issues always involve a team if possible. The other group of patients who come to us seeking dental care is those patients who are slated for cardiac surgery. The cardiologists usually prefer to get rid of all the foci of infection before they begin or before they do the surgery and dental, the oral cavity is one of the biggest foci of uh, information or infection. So it is now when we get referred such kind of patients, the things that we have to keep in mind is to be careful, to give definitive treatment, make sure that you have uh, included an infective endocarditis prophylaxis, which I'll be talking about in the next slide for those patients and preferably complete all dental treatment at least three to four weeks before the planned cardiac surgery. The American Heart Association in 2007 has very clearly slated that it is not mandatory to give a blanket antibiotic prophylaxis for all dental procedures. In fact, they have very clearly said that routine oral hygiene practices may induce endocarditis more commonly and frequently than a dental procedure at the dental office. So, what are the conditions for which a, um, a endocarditis prophylaxis is necessary? One is when you have patients who have, who have a prosthetic cardiac valve or a prosthetic material which has been used for a valve repair, where they have a previous history of infective endocarditis and patients with cardiac transplantation recipients. It is desirable if they have come to you within six months after the procedure of a valvular repair or a congenital heart disease repair. Also, in patients who have a repaired CHD with a residual defect, which is there. What are the dental procedures which require prophylaxis? Remember, it's only when there's going to involve a manipulation of the gingival tissue or the periapical region of teeth or you're going to perforate the oral mucosa. So when we are going to take a radiograph, when we are going to place or remove some orthodontic appliances, when you're adjusting orthodontic appliances or brackets, when you're removing a shedding deciduous tooth, which is mobile, or you know when there's a small trauma to the uh, lips or oral mucosa, you do not require to, prefer, uh, to give the antibiotic prophylaxis. So, Antibiotic prophylaxis, the preferred uh, route is oral. 30 minutes before procedure, there is no other dose which is recommended, only one single dose 30 minutes prior to the procedure. Amoxicillin, two milli, uh, it is 50 milligram per kilogram weight for children. 
to a maximum of two milligram, uh, two grams. And if the child cannot take uh, amoxicillin because of allergies, we can think of cephalexin, clindamycin, or azithromycin as an alternative. Again, the dosages are available. Now, let me conclude by saying that what is important as practitioners for us to remember about pediatric cardiac disorders is that we should understand what are the common cardiovascular disorders, what are the signs and symptoms that we should be looking for, know when to ask for a referral and refer to the appropriate physician, take advice and proceed, and also know the latest guidelines in antibiotic prophylaxis and infective endocarditis prevention. And here, I would like to end by quoting from our government's view. End of the bayam alla, jagradeya, COVID-19 na matra alla, pediatric cardiac conditions, matra medically compromised conditions, my number led the way in the kutigalu, my number led up by the good, jagradeyode, number a very handle chiyan, number kakayana. Thank you.